Okay, this story is called Lewis and Clark and Me, A Dog's Tale. The genre is historical fantasy. That means it's based on real events in history, but it's also a story that could never really happen, in this case because a dog can't write. As you read, look for facts on which the story is based. Um, and this is on page 44 and 45 in your uh, re blue reading book. So it'll, I'll turn to 46. So again, I would prefer that you follow along. It's probably easier if you just follow along in your uh, book. So on 46, it says, the year is 1803. Lewis and Clark are planning their expedition to t the territory west of the Mississippi River. Lewis is looking for a dog to accompany the expedition. And the story, as the story opens, he meets a 150-pound Newfoundland dog named Seaman, who goes on to tell their adventures. So this story is written in the perspective of the dog. The dog is telling the story. So it's the dog's perspective. So, and this is the same Lewis and Clark from the Sacagawea, Sacagawea book that you read in fourth grade. So, uh, Seaman, I glanced at the uh, man beside me. Look, alive. Uh, here's Byers. Something caught my attention beyond him. Down the wharf, a group of men, but I saw only one. It was Lewis. He was a full head taller than any of the other men I had known on the docks, and he was dressed in a different way. White breeches and a short blue coat with buttons that shone in the sun. A tall pointed hat with a feather made him look even taller. Lewis walked along the dock with a large stride. There was a purpose about him. My life on the wharfs was good, but I was a young dog and learned, I yearned for more. At the time, I didn't know exactly what. I sensed that this man was part of what I wanted. I sat straighter as he approached. The man who owned me, owned me stood straighter too. Lewis slowed. Need a dog, sir? My man asked. I'm looking, Lewis replied. He stooped down and looked me right in the eye. I wagged my tail and stepped forward. I wanted to sniff this strange man. He extended his hand for me. He didn't smell like any I'd ever smelled, uh, and it made me want to sniff him all over. Lewis scratched my, my neck, on the back of my neck where I like to be scratched. We're now on page 47. Again, this is told from the perspective of the dog. I'm headed out, uh, out west. Up the Missouri River, Lewis said. My man's uh, face brightened. This dog be perfect, sir. These dogs can swim. Newfoundlands, they call them. Rescue a drowning man in rough water or, uh, or in a storm. Look at these paws. You won't find another dog with paws like that. They's webbed. He spread my t uh, toes to show the webbing. So they are, uh, Lewis replied. Lewis began feeling my chest and its hindquarters. His hands were large and muscular. Water rolls off this coat, my man added. He pulled up a handful of my thick, dense double coat. Lewis examined my coat and nodded. I know the Mississippi, sir, but I don't know the Missouri, uh, my man said. It's off the Mississippi, heading northwest. We're now on page 48. So the guy, the, his old owner, the dog's owner, is trying to sell him to Lewis. North, you say? Ah, it, uh, it'll be cold up that river. Won't bother this one, though. He patted me firmly in the back. Lewis stood and looked around. He found a piece of wood that had broken off a crate. He showed it to me, then threw it. Go, he said. I wanted to go. I wanted to do whatever this man asked, but I longed to another. I looked at my man. Go on, he said. I ran for the stick and returned it to Lewis. How much, Lewis asked. Twenty dollars, and a bargain at that. Lewis looked down at me. I lifted my head proudly. Won't find a better dog than this. Perfect for your trip, my man said, trying to convince Lewis. It wasn't necessary. Lewis wanted me. I could tell. He had liked me the minute he saw me. The feeling was mutual. Lewis paid my man twenty dollars. Does he have a name? Lewis asked. I've been calling him Seaman, but you can call him anything you like. Come, Seaman, uh, Lewis called. As we walked away, my, uh, my rope in his hand, he put his other hand on my head. After that, I didn't need a rope. I would follow this man to the end of the earth. Um, 
So, and then, uh, and that's on the bottom of the page, that's just an example of something Mary Leather Lewis wrote about dogs. We're now on page 49, 49, squirrels. I, I caught a fish off the docks. I chased animals in the woods, but hunting uh, came alive for me on the river. The Ohio, Lewis called it. I have, I have always loved the water, so the day we boarded the boat and pushed out onto the Ohio River was just about the happiest day of my life. Lewis was excited too. I could tell by the way he walked, and his voice was louder than usual. The men were also excited. I could hear it in their voices. They didn't complain when they loaded the boat. Lewis was telling them uh, what to load and how to load it. Anyways, that afternoon, Lewis and I and some men started down the river. I rode uh, in the back of the boat. It was the highest place to give me the best view. From there, I could scan both banks and the, uh, and the water with just a glance. The first two weeks, I couldn't get enough of it. There were animals I had not seen before, smells I had not smelled. My skin tingled with excitement. Again, the end of page 49. Again, this is telling from the perspective of the dog. Page 50. The river was low and the men had to pull uh, much, uh, most, uh, much of the way. When they weren't pulling, they were digging channels for a boat or hiring oxen to pull the uh, boat from shore. We were only a couple weeks down the river when I had my first great day of hunting. The river wasn't quite, quite as shallow and the current not too strong, so the crew rolled, uh, rowed along leisurely. I was lying on the back uh, deck of the boat I had just scanned the shore, nothing of interest, just a few beaver and a deer. I decided to close my eyes for a nap. I blinked a few times and was ready to lay my head on my paws when something on the water up ahead caught my eye. So that's the end of page 50. We're now on the top of 51. I, I stuck my nose in the air and sniffed. I recognized the scent immediately. Squirrel. A squirrel on water? That was unusual. I had seen plenty of squirrels, but I had never seen one swim. There was something else strange. The smell of squirrel was especially strong. I had never known one squirrel to project so powerful of a scent. I, took, I stood to take a look. Right away I spotted a squirrel off the starboard side. He was swimming across the river. Another squirrel followed close behind. Without a second thought, I leaned over the side of the boat to get another look. I saw another squirrel and another. I could not believe my eyes. Hundreds of squirrels were crossing the river. The water up ahead was almost black with them. Every muscle in my body tightened to full alert. Lewis was on the other side of the boat talking to two men. I turned to him and barked. What is it? He asked. Uh, it is impossible to describe the urge I felt. I, it was as strong as anything I'd ever known. I had to get those squirrels. I barked again. Lewis scanned the water ahead. Look at that, he said to the men. Squirrels crossing the river. Now why would they do that? Food, one man suggested. Lewis paused, uh, paused for a moment. There are hickory nuts on both banks. Migrating, uh, suggested uh, the other. Lewis nodded. Maybe, or perhaps they're... I barked again. Uh, they're wasting time wondering why... Uh, uh, they were wasting time wondering why squirrels were crossing. It didn't matter. The squirrels were there hundreds of them, right in front of us. Sometimes men spend too much time thinking. They miss the fun of life. Uh, now I'm on uh, the top of page 52. They'd make a fine supper, the first man suggested with a smile. L uh, Lewis nodded. He looked at me. Let's see what you can do, seaman. Go on, fetch us a squirrel. That's what I was waiting for. I sprang off the boat and hit the water swimming. I was going to get every squirrel in that river for Lewis. My web feet made it easy. I reached the first squirrel in just minutes. When it saw me, its eyes bulged with fear. I tried to steer its sleek, uh, fat, uh, fat body away. Uh, in one swift move, I grabbed it by the neck and killed it. I carried it back to the boat. Lewis leaned over the side and took it from me. Good dog, fetch another. The crew had stopped uh, rowing and the boat drifted towards a mass of squirrels. Look at Captain Lewis's dog, yelled one of the rowers. I turned and started to swim. Now I'm on 53. I turned and started swimming again. I could hear the men cheering me on. 
in two strokes, I was on uh, on another squirrel. Good dog, Lewis yelled. Go. Uh, go, the crew echoed. Go, Seaman, go. I went and went. Over and over I, over I went. I went until I was exhausted. I don't know how long it lasted. Maybe one hour, maybe four. All I know is that when I finished, there was a pile of squirrels in the boat. Lewis and the crew were laughing and cheering. All the rest of the day, the men were patting me on... Uh, and saying good dog good boy and we'll be eating good tonight the admiration of the crew was great but the look of pride on Lewis's face was better than all the men's praise together that night the men uh, fried squirrels and we ate uh, uh, well in the three years that followed I hunted almost every day but the squirrels on the Ohio were my favorite so that's the end of 53 I'm going to stop the tape right now and then we'll listen to part two.